Gaming has changed so much within the last 20 years, within the time that I've been alive. But regardless of all those changes, there's always been one thing that has remained the same, and that is the line that divides home console gaming from portable gaming. Sure, there have been some exceptions throughout time, like the TurboGrafx Express or the Sega Genesis Nomad that allowed you to take those 16-bit home console games and bring them with you on the go, but by and large, that line has remained consistent, a divide between home console and portable experiences, and it's usually shown in the audio-video department. Games on home consoles usually looked leagues better than anything portable systems were ever capable of producing. It wasn't until 2011 with the launch of PlayStation Vita and 2017 with the launch of the Switch did we start to see that line really get blurred as Vita and Switch started to get ports of home console games and they held up pretty nice. Sure, they were scaled down quite a bit, but the experience was preserved. And that was something never before seen in home console to portable conversions up until those two platforms launched. Now, as the world continues to change around us, our devices, whether it be our smartphones, our consoles, our PCs, are all able to communicate with each other in a way that was never once possible. And we're starting to see this idea hit gaming as well. We look at Microsoft with Project xCloud and what their vision of the future is. To play Xbox games and stream them to any device, a potato if you wanted to, so long as it has a stable internet connection. We saw Nintendo utilize their own vision for portable gaming by creating a console hybrid that allows you to take the same games on your TV, put them on a tablet, and take it with you on the go. But in Sony's camp, we've never really seen anything to this extent. Sure, they've launched PSP back in 2004 that was a smash hit success, but still fell short of the Nintendo DS's sales, but they've tried to blur the lines themselves with the feature they've launched called Remote Play, which allowed it to work with the PlayStation 3 to stream video, music, and photos to the PSP, and very few PS3 games, but it by and large wasn't utilized because the internet infrastructure just wasn't there at the time. We saw this feature continue on with the PlayStation Vita and the PlayStation 3, and it eventually got carried over into PS4, but there were still problems there. Vita lacked all of the buttons that the DualShock 3 and DualShock 4 had, and let's be honest, not a lot of people own a Vita. There's about 16 million of them out there compared to the 87 million PS3s and 96 million PS4 systems. So I think it's safe to say there aren't a lot of people remote playing PS4 games to their PS Vita systems. Sony tried to remedy this once again by allowing Remote Play to work with their Xperia smartphones, but again, there's more problems here because, in the US at least, there aren't a lot of people that own Sony Xperia smartphones. They're not bad phones, the market's just dominated by Apple and Samsung. Sony tried to remedy this once again by allowing Remote Play to work with iOS devices, but there's still a major problem that plagues both iOS and their own Xperia smartphones, and it's actually something the Vita does better. And that's the one fact that Remote Play only works on local Wi-Fi networks, the one that the PS4 or PS4 Pro is tethered to. With the PlayStation Vita, I can stream PS4 games anywhere in the world so long as the Vita and the PS4 system are both connected to Wi-Fi network. I'm not just limited to playing at home. And once again, as the world becomes more interconnected, gaming is no longer just these two categories, portable or home console gaming. It's just gaming. And while Sony seems to be pretty comfortable with their home console sales and their VR sales, Microsoft and Nintendo are both finding ways to bring these home console experiences on the go. Because I'm sure, like many people out there, I can't stay at home playing games as often as I used to. And if I'm honest with you, I've played some of the greatest games that PS4 has had to offer this generation, like God of War, Horizon, Infamous, Marvel, Spider-Man, and Persona 5, all through remote play on PS Vita. Sure, there have been some quirks because Vita's missing select buttons and I had to get used to touch controls, but it worked. But the problem is, is not a lot of people know about it and not a lot of people are gonna buy a $200 Vita just to stream PS4 games. So I would like to think that Sony either has plans to utilize all Android smartphones and iOS devices, or maybe when PS5 launches, they're gonna launch a portable device that's only purpose is to either connect to a PS5 or the PlayStation Now service to stream select PS5, PS4, PS3, PS2, and PS1 games to the system. Of course, only time will tell. But I hope that Sony doesn't rest on their home console sales because again, gaming is changing and I really hope Sony doesn't take as long to adapt as they have with cross-platform play because they're gonna be left behind in the past again.